Hey everybody, this is Brent in Central Arkansas. Today's video is about the controversial purple tomato. Now, sometime back last year, probably spring or summer, a, a company called Norfolk, I believe it is, I'll put it in the link below, I mean in the uh, video below in text, uh, they bred a, they, well they took the genes from a snapdragon flower that's purple, I guess, in color, and they inserted it somehow into the genetics of a tomato. And then they sought um, FDA approval to distribute the seed because it's genetically modified material, a genetically modified tomato. The United States is the only place that eventually accepted the sale of that. Other countries aren't doing it right now. Uh, but yeah, they offered it the, the tomato up for people to buy uh, I think it was like 20 bucks for 10 seed and so I bought some I put my name on the list months before it eventually came out and then it came out and um, and so then I bought some so I decided to grow it and I've and this is what this video is about I'm going to assess it so I've got it to maturity right now this is what it looks like I'm going to bring you in closer. I got a cluster off of it. I've got three tomato plants growing from it right now, and I think that's enough to assess it. That's all I need. Um, so the the genetics are patented, I believe, and so you could at one time buy these. You can't buy them anymore. They're not selling them anymore, but they did um, collaborate with Red Sun Farms, I believe what it is. I'll put a little picture here of that collaboration. And they started selling the tomato, which they ended up calling Empress, uh, to several food chains, mostly on the East Coast, if, I, if I'm thinking correctly. So these tomatoes are available for our consumption now. And so yeah, the FDA approved it. It's, it is definitely genetically modified. Uh, Norfolk says there was nothing nefarious about the modification. The genetics were inserted solely to bring the antioxidant purple color uh, that antioxidants are high in purple and so they wanted to bring that forward to make uh, the tomato more nutritious and healthier for us. Um, now GMO I don't know, that's kind of a double-edged sword. Their intent may have been to, uh, to do it for our benefit nutritionally, but you know, once a door opens, and it has opened, uh, that just brings in all kinds of players into the genetically modified arena. And even though genetically modified food, it, we consume it all the time anyway, it hasn't been available to the common folk if you will, the non-contracted major farmers. Uh, but now, with this door open, there's no way we're gonna close it. So my thoughts are kind of mixed on it. It could be a slippery slope, um, might be a good thing. I just don't know. Um, and it also kind of depends on where shady people are going to go with it out of curiosity or furthering mankind or climate change or whatever. So it's very important for us breeders that breed um, naturally to keep uh, naturally bred things on the market for people to have access to and those of us who don't want to use GMO products um, can buy you know, naturally bred. Um, tomatoes for example or other fruits and vegetables anyway I still don't know quite how I feel about it um, I'm a little mm, you know I'm a little that I'm a little could be good so tell me what you think about this tomato but this video I'm going to show you it growing just kind of what it looks like uh, the size of the tomatoes and all that kind of stuff. And I'm going to cut them open and I'm going to put uh, put it all on this video for you. This is a purple tomato. This is the one everybody was talking about for a while. I think I paid 20 bucks for a package. And I've got a double stem going up here. I'd say it's about, uh, about 
five foot tall right now. It's got good fruit set on all of them. And they're beginning to change color a little bit here. And so far it's not very attractive and it's not the vivid purple that I saw. Let's give it some time to ripen and we'll cut one open and take a look at it. This is what they look like in the sun. Now to let them ripen a little bit more, see if they will. They're still pretty firm. And we'll get it. We'll cut them open and do a taste test. I'm gonna grab a couple of these for Gina to eat. I've already pulled a cluster off and that's what I'm gonna use for the review. But I'm gonna get some of these so Gina can have them and maybe me too later on. So yeah, the first impression is that they're quite firm. And um, I don't know how that's gonna translate in the taste test, but we'll see. These have been sitting on my counter for a few days now because it's not been bright and sunny out. And I think the best chance to get a look at the color uh, is in full sunlight. This is a small truss and the texture of these, I'm not sure if I've said this already, but it seems to be a little firmer than the average tomato. They are getting softer now. It's been sitting inside probably for about five or six days now. But that's what they look like. And um, let me get them a little closer. I wouldn't say it's a gorgeous purple color. And I'm now my vision isn't great. My color vision is not perfect. But. Uh, to me, it looks like there's some browns in there or some very, very dark reds. Anyway, I can't quite tell, but these are the typical size. And I'm going to uh, take them over into the shade and get a weight on them so you can see the actual weight, what they are. And then I'm going to cut them open and bring them back out into the sun so you can see what they look like cut open and uh, just get a full assessment on what these uh, tomatoes are all about. Then I'll do a taste test. Got my little scale here. Let me center it more in the camera. Turn it on. It zeroed out. It's in grams now. I'm going to pull one off of here that I'm going to cut open. I'm going to get kind of one of the better looking ones. We'll pull this one out here. And they're all typically about this size. Now, I don't need to get a bunch of different one fruits because they're going to be slightly different. But generally speaking, they're all going to be about this size. That is 10.3 grams, which is a little smaller than I expected. Let's get into the ounces part of it. It's 0.36 rather of an ounce. Let me make sure here. Back to grams, 10.3. This is my hand in size, so you can see. I would call that a medium large cherry. It's, um, it's I've seen bigger. Uh, a lot of them are this size and smaller. All right, I've got a knife here. And I'm going to cut it open here in the shade, then I'll take you back out into the sun. Let me pierce it. 
because this knife isn't serrated. Okay, it's it's got the color through and through, that is for sure. I'll bring you up here and then we'll do the same in the sun. That's what it looks like. In the sun. Let's get a taste test on it. And I've got them here and I'm going to do a taste test on it. The one, the only one I cut open. And then I'm going to save the seed. They are quite okay with you saving your own seed and um, giving it away to the community and probably just anybody. In fact, you know, they're selling the tomatoes. And this is an open poll pollinated, also known as highly inbred line. So when they sell the fruit in the grocery stores, anybody can save the seed. In fact, I think they're selling them for four or five dollars a package and you can get a ton more seed than what I paid for it and grow them yourself. So, um, yeah, if you can find them in the stores, you can save the seed and grow them yourself. They just don't want you to sell it or breed with it. Anyway, we'll see how that goes. So I'm gonna taste it now and um, let you know what I think. Oh. It tastes purple. It perfectly describes it. It tastes purple. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> It tastes it does have a weirder taste to it it's not bad but there's nothing it's it's kind of bland there's nothing special to it at all and in, in taste now the health benefits if you can breathe the high um, I'm gonna try to say the word anthrocyanins or whatever they are I already say that. Um, if you can breed, you know, the same stuff that's in blueberries, the high color uh, content that's good for you, the antioxidants. Um, anyway, if you could breed that in a good tasting tomato, that would really be a benefit, especially a beefsteak. But anyway, uh, can you imagine a purple beefsteak sandwich, tomato sandwich? Oh man, that would set it apart, wouldn't you? You just serve it up in a restaurant. You just have it in an open face so people can see the tomato and get a little wow factor before they start eating it. Anyway, they need to improve on the taste. It definitely does not taste like a flower. It definitely does not taste like the snapdragon flower for sure. It's got more tomato. I don't know what a snapdragon flower tastes like. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> it's late morning. I just had my coffee. Anyway, so that's my assessment of, of the tomato. It's, um, like I said, I don't know where I stand on it yet. Uh, let's see where we go in the future. I'm, uh, in my 50s right now past mid 50 and uh, my time here isn't going to be a whole lot longer so my passion for change is decreasing as I get older and I become more self-centered so I'll leave the passion and the advocating for this or that to the younger folks but in the meantime if you like this video please share it it helps grow the channel, gets more people to come over, hopefully subscribe. If you're not subscribed, I really appreciate it if you subscribe. Liking helps distribute it more, helps more people see it also. Uh, but most importantly, leave a comment. I like talking to you guys. So until the next video, we'll see ya.
things that can be real.